talk to me in the UK and we say hello. Hello, RJ. Hello, Stephen. How are you? I'm good today. I'm feeling better than I have in a long time. And it's good that we're back together broadcasting in Bots for Broadcasters. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. It's so good. Now, I went to town today because we originally had uh, Brigetti joining as guest. I sent out a broadcast on Be Live in Five. I know I shouldn't. I sent out a broadcast on the live video hub as well. I couldn't resist. Um, because I got two messages prior to that, one from Be Live TV and one from Molly. And I thought, well, if they can, you know, right. So I sent those out. So there might be somebody joining us from there. Yeah. Then Very good. I went over to Udemy and I sent out a message with a link to five and a half thousand people. I realized afterwards that they might not get the message till tomorrow. In which case, welcome to the replay. If you've joined us from Udemy, we are live at 12 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday and you're more than welcome to come and join us either on camera or in text or wherever you wish. If you're watching us on the live video hub, please type the word hello and you'll get a link to join us on the Be Live in Five page. And you'll actually meet our new bot uh, who's been working overtime uh, for the last seven days. But bots do work 24 seven once they're set up. Well, that's enough of the, the where we are. But where have you been? And why? Um, so I went on this, everybody. This was crazy time, okay? So uh, it's the Marketer's Cruise, and uh, I was on a boat with about 450 other marketers, and we networked, talked about marketing, talked about what we do, talked about tools that we use, all day, every day, seven days. <laughs> well, there was also, we also went out. Uh, we also left the boat and did uh, did some cool stuff. But, uh, but yeah, there was, I learned so much, Stephen. Uh, uh -huh. I, I met a guy who builds chatbot software. Oh, he, he actually builds the software that you and I use. He doesn't build, he didn't build mini chat. No. He built a different software. Uh huh. And this software, I'm listen, y'all. We're gonna get geeky for about thirty seconds. <laughs> uses natural language processing, which means uh -huh. that in in, in many chat, uh, if you if you all don't know this, uh, in many chat you can set up a keyword or a key phrase, and if somebody types in that exact keyword or a key phrase, then they'll that sets off a string of responses and people use this for FAQs all the time. What hours are you open? If that's a key uh -huh. phrase and somebody types that in, your bot will come back with an answer of what hours you're open. Um, but what natural language processes does is it says it, it will set an intent and then it will try to match things to that intent. So instead of having to type in exactly what hours are you open? If somebody typed in, how long are you open today? When do you close today? What time do you open? They could type in all those phrases and get your hours back. Uh huh. This, so this bot, uh, this bot system in some ways is more powerful than what we're using at ManyChat. Mm, because it's we're looking for specific phrases. Right, and, P and as you know, uh, Stephen, from uh, from your work with bots, and I, I certainly know this, when you're monitoring bots, people ask all kinds of things that are sort of close, but uh, but you know, no cigar, and then you've got to go back and, and you know manually take care of that stuff, which I don't mind at all because I want to start a conversation anyway, but. Mm -hmm to the person typing the question in it you look like a rock star when they get the right answer right away and this increases the chance that they will actually get that rock star answer right away what happens not that it would ever happen to me of course but what happens if somebody makes a typo typos i don't think that that, that it doesn't cover typos uh, okay fair that's good that's okay that's fine. I don't make them anyway, so it's not really that much of a problem. 
Exactly. Right. Well, so, okay. so this software. Let me let me just tell you this yeah. dude and I. Uh, his name's Alex, and uh, he's an amazingly smart guy. Uh, Alex and I had a really long conversation about um, about his bot, and then when we came home, we had a meeting Monday morning, nine o'clock, uh, with him and his team. Um, and they showed me their product, which is amazing. Uh, and it's it's missing a couple of features that I need to be able to to do my stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. But their customer service is amazing. And you know, as well as I do, the many chat customer service sometimes lacks a little bit. Yeah, well, it's difficult, isn't it? They've been it's too successful. When you've got a company that charges a lot of people a little amount of money, and they're yeah. the first in line charging forward, they care more about volume of customers than they do qual you know, quality of relationship. Yeah. And so it's it's not anything that ManyChat is doing that other companies don't do, um, you know. That's that's just the way that it is. Um, but wow! Uh, so I'm I'm very impressed with them, and we're working together to create the the couple of things that I would need to be able to to switch over. And at that point, you'll tell us who they are. Uh, yes, I absolutely will. Um, right now, they have really great customer service capabilities, which means that it's very reactionary. They don't have broadcasts and sequences yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they don't have the proactive place where you can reach out, like when we send reminders for our shows. They don't have that proactive reach out stuff, but they have an incredible system for when people type in. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, you know, work with them to try to develop the front end stuff so that so that I can get everybody on this thing because it's awesome. It's well, that's just awesome. A, that's a win-win situation because you're sharing your expertise and they're giving you a bot which will be useful to you and your clients. Yeah, yeah. very much so. Right. So, uh, so that was exciting in itself. Um, and then um, I, I met a lot of people, obviously. I mean, it was just, it was full of meeting people all day. Um, I spent time with people I know already. Um, there's now just beginning to be a group of people that when I travel, I look forward to seeing. Right. Some of them are clients yeah. and some of them are not, but it's, it's a great time. And then it, I think that what the trip really did for me, and this is, this is why, um, I, I had, I had, I strongly suggested in a very firm way that Stephen go with me next year. Um, <laughs> right. The reason I think that you would benefit Stephen is because the, what the trip really did for me was it, it broaden my horizons. Uh -huh. It just made me think about bots in the context of so many different things that I hadn't been thinking about before. Um, and making partnerships with people like the folks uh, at this chatbot company, uh -huh. making, making friends with people. And, and you know, I, it was amazing. It changed the course of my next year. I'm absolutely certain. In that case, I will give very serious consideration. I'll put it on my list of things to do, and uh, I'll check out everything uh, starting after the show, get the flights and the hotels and everything. Well, you don't need to have, you, yeah, you know what I mean. The itinerary sorted out. Right, right. Because I've got to get from London or Bristol over and then back again. So I shall, I shall work on that. If everybody's watching us now, sorry, if everybody's watching us now, if you're on the live video hub page, Please say hello, and then you'll get a reply automatically telling us you the link to click to actually join us. Thanks for watching. And we are on the VLive in five page, and uh, that's our home. But we do spread our wings, and we're also on Black Belt Bots today and uh, several other pages as well. And what we're looking to do is to get a network of people all using the, what we, what I've called Kristen the Redirect Bot. Um, we've now got on the live video hub, uh, 40 shows who have got the redirect attached. So when they go live on the live video hub, anybody who comments will get a message directing them directly to the show. Yeah. So we've cut out, I cut out all this 
where are you broadcasting from stuff all you need to do is type in hello and it means you as a broadcaster you don't need to put a link in the comments as a viewer participant you don't need to do anything other than say hello and say hello to claire and when this minute find claire when claire went live on the live video hub today there was a message uh if you commented on the live video hub you got sent straight to claire's broadcast so that's that's the magic and the second bot that's running today is the greetings bot uh which you just said hello claire we're so glad you could join us today we enjoy your company we're here to answer your messenger bot questions and to show you the latest developments i've got all the spelling writers to rj i spell checked it that's magical all right so that's what i've been doing whilst you've been how was Mexico, by the way? Did you do actually dock in Mexico? We did. We docked three times in Mexico. Now, I was so busy talking to people that I only actually left the boat one time. <laughs> <laughs> you went on a cruise to Mexico and you saw Mexico. You, yeah. You've actually, your feet went on the ground. You were on Mexican soil. Okay, well, the mission accomplished because the mission wasn't to go to Mexico, was it? Well, I mean, if wherever it's the the deals are on the boat, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, like next year, they're going to the Caribbean. Oh, I'll probably, I'll probably walk ashore a little bit more in the Caribbean. Uh, but honestly, this was my first time on a cruise ship, and it was my first time on the marketers' cruise, and. Uh -huh. I mean, there were times that I was up talking about bots until four in the morning. That I believe. That I believe. Totally and my, believe. my cabin was on the inside of the boat. So uh -huh. it was so dark in there and I didn't have an alarm. And so sometimes, so my sleep got really wonky. And, you know, I mean, just yeah. uh, I left the boat once. That was my goal. And next year I'll leave the boat more often. So you went through several different time changes, time zones. Really, so many. Seriously. Yeah, your phone would say one thing, and the ship's time would be another. It was a whole yeah. crazy thing. I know, I know. I mean, that's the thing about traveling across time zones. You sort of lose where you are, really. But if you, you know, but well, okay, we we're here today to talk about uh, messenger bots as well. And if you have any questions about messenger bots, please do ask. If you want to join us on camera, that would be absolutely brilliant. And just type guest to join us on camera and uh, that's all you need to do and our many chat messenger bot will attend to you by sending you a message with a direct link to join us on the show that's the beauty of bots now i thought we, we sort of go back a bit because it's always good to to retrace us, our steps and i suppose the the, one, the first place to start is why should people have a messenger bot in the first place well, who right. can have them? Who can have them? Who qualifies? So <clears throat> I would say that most small businesses could use one. The exception would be if you are, uh, if you're a plumber, uh, you might not need a bot. You might, you might not, I mean, el everybody's eligible, but what the things that you put inside the bot are how you're special, how you're different, how you take care of people, um, what's your particular genius in the world. Um, for, for if, if you're, if you're a plumber and you're reasonably, you know, technologically savvy, Maybe you want to, you know, maybe you actually want to. So maybe I take it back about the plumber. Who? <laughs> so who? Uh, <laughs> let's ask that question again. Well, I, uh, it, I mean, there, there is an ideal candidate who we know, uh, and that's Peter Stewart up in Aberdeen. And he is a pest controller, which is sort of on a par with being a plumber. But you're actually sorting out fixed problems for people. And a problem bot would be a good idea because if you just 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 run with it for a moment uh you're a pest controller and every year people are going to come to you about wasps nests yeah now the information about a wasp nest does not change the actions you have to take 
to remove it are exactly the same. So you can put up a knowledge base of what to do when you get a wasp nest on your building, and that will be there forever. And you could say to people, just pop into Messenger, type in wasp. Yep. Just pop into Messenger, type in mouse. Pop into Messenger, and you see where I'm going? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we agree, though, that um, totally that bots are good for this are good for business because they, they're incredible for business and nonprofit. We won't, we won't exclude our nonprofit friends. We won't. No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. In fact, anybody who's in business, who have got a Facebook page. I can't think of any reason not to have a bot. It, when we get to the stage when 99% of businesses are running bots, then it's going to be difficult. But at the moment, very small percentage of businesses using bots are. I mean, we could virtually count them, uh, well, very quickly on one, two hands, three hands, four hands. There aren't many businesses actually using bots, is my point. <clears throat> at this moment, it's still the leading edge or bleeding edge of technology at this point. Um, but that's why it's a really great time to get in because right now, you can experiment, make mistakes, and you know, and it's and it's still okay when lots and lots of people have these. Then you're going to have to kind of fight to stand out a little bit. Uh, but excluding looking forward to that time, the reason why why bots why a business. Uh, I won't say should, but is encourage why I encourage businesses to invest their time and their money in this thing. It's not just another marketing channel. It's not like somebody's just put up another social network and now you have to be a part of that darn thing too. It's not like that because the way that these are conceived and the way that these works is 180 degrees different from the ways that we know. <coughs> For instance, for instance, most social media and email um, and my, many of our marketing systems are built in a broadcast and lecture format. It's not a conversation. An email is, you know, a couple of paragraphs to a couple of pages of text, probably a, a call to action at the bottom and bing, we're out. Uh, live stream is actually a conversation because we can pop people's questions up on the screen, answer them and have somewhat of a conversation, but live streaming is the exception. Most of our stuff having, you know, putting out Facebook posts, putting out Instagram posts, putting out posts in all of our social media networks, writing emails, making videos. It's all one person lecturing to the many, right? Well, let me ask you this. Do you like to be lectured to? Never. If somebody <laughs> tells me, sorry, if somebody tells me what to do, then I'm definitely not going to do it. Um, what I want is somebody to listen to what I'm saying, to have a two-way discussion about something and to be gently taken down a path to which I have no objection. What I don't want is somebody telling me what to do. Back to you, Audrey. You, you absolutely don't want someone telling you what to do. And lectures have been proven in many, many, many times over to be ineffective in teaching people stuff and getting through um, because most of the information you can't, you can't stop and ask questions. You can't, you know, it's a, it's a one way deal. Like somebody sends you an email. How many times have you bounced back and asked them a question? And if you have done that at all, how many times have you actually gotten an answer? So it's not, it's not great communication. This one way person lecturing here, look at my stuff, look at my stuff, look at my stuff. It's not good. It's not effective. Some people have done really well on it. Most of us don't. So here's the reason to invest your time and your money. And honestly, it ain't a big investment. If you pop over to ManyChat, 10 bucks a month is the pro account, which I recommend. 
Um, and I don't get any money for saying that. Um, 10 bucks a month ain't a lot. It's your time that you'll be investing. But if you're interested, go poke around. You don't have anything to lose. Um, uh, anyway, the reason why why people investing time and money in a bot is a good thing is because when you're allowed an opportunity to have a conversation, a back and forth, a back and forth format is so much better. A, the person getting your communications is in charge. They can stop getting this stuff at any time, of course, in a single click, not 78 clicks like an email. Um, they're, they're in charge of the interaction. They're in charge of pushing buttons, answering questions. It's a back and forth deal. It is is conversation. Uh, sorry, wrong title. I'll come to that one in a minute. It is conversations. Did you lose I, me for a second? No. Did I? Did you lose me? I've got it. an echo, which will go in a second. I we've got gremlins today, RJ. Now that you're back, they'll be sorted pretty darn quick. But we've had gremlins, and yeah. now we're we're back in business. So all is good. And you just mentioned one of the things that, that uh, we are trained in Messenger. Since Messenger started, Facebook Messenger started, we are trained that somebody sends us a message, we get a warning, alert, we're told that it's, we've got a message, and our reaction is to run off, drop whatever we're doing, go to Messenger and answer it, because it might be a customer. But we reply. The customer says something, we reply. Customer says something, and a conversation is started. We're used to say something, reply, say something, reply. And you can't do that with email. You can't do it in real time. With email, if you send somebody, if you sent out a mail shot today, first of all, the open rate would be south of 10%. And the second thing is, you've got to wait for the person to read the email at the end of their long, busy day and then take the time to reply. Whereas if you send them a message in Messenger, well, so story. That's the way it works these days at the moment. Because bots create conversations. And uh, okay, and question and from in, gospel. Sorry. Oh, and in a conversation, the person gets the information that they need and that they asked for, not all this other stuff. Oh. It's a it's a way to filter out. And just give people what's valuable to them instead of all this other stuff that mostly doesn't apply. Like let's take uh, let's take the wasp nest for instance. Yep. If you you know if uh, if uh, our friend Peter was giving a, a lecture or telling people all about his services, wasps might be a tiny part of that. If you're only concerned with the wasps, then there's that tiny part that's valuable, and most of it's not. Yeah. Bots make it so that you can figure out what that person needs and just surface the valuable stuff for them. See if they latch on to that. And if they do, you can continue a conversation with them. And if they don't, then maybe this is not for them and they need to, you know, look somewhere else. But uh, that's the that's the power. That's the reason why I'm so passionate. I know. And I'm just going to put that uh, because we're going to. I make a video with this and put it on Udemy. You never know. So the point is, in summary, the bots can do all the qualifying of prospects. All. Once it's set up, it will run forever. And uh, yeah, great point. And the other uh, two points, just to go across, as you said earlier, 10 bucks a month. Bots are inexpensive. That's 10 bucks per page. And if you think that the minimum you can spend well, on a Facebook advert and reach who knows who uh, is $20, then it's, well, it's the most inexpensive way of marketing. And just a note uh, that you can also take our course about bots, which is called Bots for Broadcasters, for 10 bucks too. We like to fit in with the sort of price structure. Just ask. Right. Okay. Now, the next thing I was going to come on to uh, was something that we can't do, that bots can do, 
Oh, sorry, I missed Gospel's question. Sorry, Gospel. So Gospel's saying, so how do you talk to people without sounding like you're telling them what to do? Ah. That's, uh, that's a good one. Um, so, you know, one of the things that you can do, Gospel, and this is, I know this might be a little counterintuitive, but stick with me here. Um, you can say, um, you can ask permission to tell them what to do. You can say, would you like me ha to tell you how to fix that? And then if they if, give them a yes, no, if they say yes, then click on to, okay, here's your first step. I usually put a little icon, either a little check mark or a num number one right there. And then I, you know, then I tell them the next step. And then I give them a little space and tell them the next step. Um, that you can sound like you're telling people what to do. I think that the point of it was let's not give people 87 instructions and only two are actually valid for that person. Let's give them what they need. Let's give them value without having them sort through a whole bunch of stuff that they don't care about. We, I was just talking about this this morning. We're inundated with information every day in every way there are there are there are gas stations here in Omaha, Nebraska that when you uh, go to get gas and you pull the little thing out and you put it in your car, there's a TV monitor that starts playing commercials. Like we are inundated with information. None of those commercials apply to me. I don't want to watch the news right now. Could you possibly stop? I've stopped going to those gas stations, by the way. Um, we're inundated every day with bunches of stuff, and we have to sort through to get that tiny gold nugget of what we need. What if you could have a conversation and just figure out by the way that they're talking and the questions that they're asking, what they need, surface that little golden nugget. You save people time and information overload and stress. When you do that and people remember you, you can stand out as a small business right now by giving people what they need like that. I think I just reiterated the same point over again, but I'm so it's, passionate it's okay. about it. It's just reinforcement. We we need to hear things two or three times before they actually, well, I know I do. Um, right, Gospel's saying, great, thank you. And I just put it on the screen. We'll screenshot that Gospel thing most well. Now, another thing that the bots can, should do, because we're talking about, we think of bots as being something automatic, something made of metal, something remote. But you, and when you're talking to your customers, you actually talk to your clients and say, give the bot a personality. And that's important, isn't it? It's hugely important. The, the thing is about bots, uh, one of the other things that I enjoy so much is that if you do give your bot a personality, and it can be the personality of your brand, it could be your personality, you get to make the choice. But when you give it a personality, it breathes life into it. We have all, and I have certainly, read bots that are like, that are very bit of information, bit of information, bit of information, very generic. That's not the stuff that's going to make people smile when they see your icon in their inbox. I want to make people smile when they see the icon. And for my bot, for my client's bots, I want there to be some sort of joy. What what she got to say today? That's what that's the reaction I want. To do that, I give the bots that I work with a personality. I give them. There's this one I'm doing right now. Uh, it's uh, Rao in the robot, and uh, he is uh, delivering uh, a challenge on keto uh, to a couple of hundred people, uh, and and it's it's he's absolutely hilarious. Uh, this bot is. Uh, he tells little jokes, uh, teases people. I mean, it's just funny. You want to have that kind of fun. You want to inject that kind of fun if you can, because that's what people remember. If you can get someone to laugh or smile, you've gotten you've gotten into their hearts a little bit. You know what I mean? You've gotten into their memories a little bit. There's no need to hit them every 48 hours with another announcement. If your bot has personality and it gives them value, then you can break all the rules of marketing. You can message them when you have something to say or when you have something of value, 
not every 48 hours like some folks do. <laughs> not us. Um, every 48. I don't know. I don't know. I might be guilty of that sometimes. But that's only, that's only because I'm so wired to actually do it and get out there and, and approach people. Um, the other thing that, that bots take on a personality, you do it in a light-hearted manner, you're having a conversational exchange, all good. But to uh, Gospel's question, how do you do that when no one is watching your live? Now, that's – we go through cycles with uh, – I'm going to turn it off the screen for a second. We go through cycles with Facebook where oh. the viewing figures are good, the viewing figures are very good, the viewing figures are abysmal, awful, horrible. And throughout it all, the one thing you can do – but from my point of view, is be consistent. We know that this, we hope that everybody knows that this show goes out 12 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday, and we'll do so forever and ever. So people know that the show is here. So you've got to go out at a consistent time. You've got to have good content. Now, I know, Gospel, that you actually do both of those. So where do we go next? Where do we go next? So, uh... How do you do that when no one is watching you live? It was the question. Um, I'm, I, I need a little bit more clarification. If you could for me, Gospel, tell me, do you mean that when you're having like low, right. low okay. numbers on your views or when you're – or, or were, was that a question about how do you, how do you write personality into your bot? I'm, I'm confused on – what the right. question means. So if you can throw some clarification, we will totally answer that for you. Okay. Gospel is on the live video hub. So of course. it means that, of course, of course. But that's the, basically that's one way to do it because people do watch video on the live video hub. It's like the television channel for BigLive.tv and you can go and find different shows every single day to watch. And if you were to binge watch the shows that are going to be live TV, you'd be sat there for three days every week, 24 hours a day. So at least but the, the point about that is that you have to reach out at the time that people are actually watching now gospel and i are based in the uk i'm in wiltshire gospel is in rochester so for instance tomorrow morning when we go live with loving for britain we'll go out at 10 a.m uk time which is 5 a.m on the east coast or 4 a.m. Central. So we know that 80% of the people who watch live video are actually in the States. So going out at either our 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, 80% of the audience just isn't there. So if at all possible, you should try and broadcast, and this is just from experience, if you try and broadcast between 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. in the UK, then you'll get an American audience as well because you get them when they're just working up at 8 a.m. And going through to 9 p.m. Is, is basically what most people do uh, in terms of scheduling shows. You rarely find shows scheduled after 3 p.m. Eastern for some inexplicable reason. Um, but if you're based in the UK, I've been working on uh, Eastern time for the last two years and when i put a show together i will say right okay what time is that in eastern time is it after eight o'clock in the morning i'm good is it before eight o'clock in the morning not worth it because and this is the final bit of this um in the uk the number of people watching live video is growing but it's, it's by no means uh reaching out to everybody yet we've not gone uh, public, in other words, we're sort of under the radar a little bit. So if that's it from a UK perspective, and Gospel has got more information as for us whilst I've been waffling. All right, okay, and I was totally talking about something which Gospel didn't mean, but I thought it was good anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Gospel is actually saying, I mean, when you're live and you don't want to sound like you're telling them what to do, how do you do that when people are not there live and they watch the replay, which is an additional question. And as I've been speaking for the last hour or so, it's over to you. Um, 
So you, when you're live, you don't want to sound like you're giving a lecture. Um, I never want to sound like I'm giving a lecture. So even if people aren't there, gospel, um, when I do, it, it's easy. It's easy to bounce back and forth when you're when you're two, when there's co-hosts like this, and not have anything sound like a lecture because we're both kind of participating and uh, and we're switching back and forth. So uh, to me, that that cuts the lecture opportunity. But when you're if you're live streaming alone. And you're trying to, and you're trying to make it not sound, trying to make it an interactive experience. Interaction, if you make it interactive, automatically it's not going to be a lecture anymore. So, um, so what I do is I have when I just do my show alone, I've got a list of bullet points over here, and after every bullet point, which you know I'm explaining a topic or I'm I'm answering a question or something, after every bullet point. I will do a check for understanding. Um, and that is asking the audience a question. Even if there's nobody there, who cares? They'll be there on the replay. It's totally fine. Ask them a question. D you know, uh, ask them to reflect on something. Ask them to put it in the comments. Uh, ask a question. What that does <clears throat> is it helps provide some, some stopping points in the brain. And psychologically, and there's been some studies on this too, the way that people learn, if you give information in short bits and then ask for understanding, short bit, ask for understanding, they'll remember a lot more later. Um, so you're, you're accomplishing two things. If you, are, if you are doing a check for understanding after your major points, uh, if you're asking people questions and to participate, even if they're not there, it doesn't matter. They'll be there on the replay. It's fine. Um, then you are, you're cutting the lecture uh, the cutting lecture type stuff and you're helping people retain more of the information that you're talking about, which maybe then they'll like, they're likely to get more value from. I hope that answers your question. And if it doesn't, there's always Steven. It's true. I've, I've been answering questions that gospel doesn't help. So where am I going with this? Um, right. Okay. All good. And thank you gospel. Um, and gospel does many things. Uh, the shows go out, as I say, 8 a.m. in the UK, 3 a.m. Eastern. Uh, there is a lot of value in the replay, and I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but what you could do, just as an idea, is you could actually put a bot on with uh, a keyword link, and during the show, ask people, because the show's about less than half an hour, if you ask people two or three times to comment with a word, then you could get some interaction going both live and on the replay if there's many chat bot and you could then sort of build build from there so i would put a bot on single keyword keep it simple as possible and say this the word of the day and gospel will appreciate that uh, the word of the day today is if you type it you'll get my personal attention this week or whatever you want to say and just get people to actually 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 have to comment with something and i can say without fear of contradiction now uh, i'm going to tell half a story now my apologies for doing that on the live video hub what we do uh, is we actually promote shows that are live on the hub without them knowing about it um, <laughs> not at random but with specific purpose and I promoted a show uh, which is a Portuguese show. It goes out in the Portuguese language. They have, obviously, uh, you'd have to be able to speak Portuguese to understand it. Fortunately, there are people who live in Portugal who speak Portuguese. So when putting the ad together, rather than doing my uh, usual American audience, which is set around five cities in the States, I actually picked three cities in Portugal all of whom are Portuguese speaking. Right, bottom line to this story is that that video has had more views than, well, its, it's view, viewership went up hundreds of percent, it just went through the roof. But the other thing, the interesting thing is, and this is a replay that people are watching, is that there was a call to action there. And the call to action was to go off to belive.tv to Marco's page 
and take a 30-day trial of BeLive.tv. In addition to actually watching the show, people took that call to action. Now, not the thousands who actually watched the video, but the tens who wanted to know more about BeLive TV, which was the aim of the exercise. So bottom line on this is, if you put a call to action in the post itself, so something that people can click and go and get more information, if you put a keyword bot on, just one bot, then you can actually create more engagement. Uh, and uh, Gospel just set up a, a word. Okay, now, can you translate the word at the end? I, um, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And what, now Gospel has a show, which is Word of the Day, which I enjoy uh, tuning into, and also gives financial information, also teachers in the real world. Um, so bringing expertise to live video and it is worthy of a wider audience and you do think you, you do see videos and you think why doesn't that video have more views it needs it should have more views the quality of the content is so good delivery is so good that more people should be watching it i think that's something that we're all working on and uh, perhaps we could do a show down the road uh, where we concentrate on actually audience building using bots or a bot based strategy. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I'll talk about that anytime. Brilliant. Even if not asked to talk about it, I will talk. About it. <laughs> We've got a series of, it's, it's a well known, well, not too well kept secret that RJ and I have a set of keywords. <laughs> and if somebody says one of those keywords during the comments, then not only will the bot react, but we will too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. And we've got an explanation. Thank you, Gospel. I should pay more attention. It's a hashtag for my Monday morning, one word for the week. Hence, M M O W W. Okay. We should make that go viral. Uh, in actual fact, in all the comments I now make, I'm actually putting the just the LVH tag in there. It only takes a second, and it, obviously, if you put it, if you're watching this now, Gospel, every time you put uh, your hashtag in in the comments, and please do, then Facebook will see it, Facebook will like it, Facebook will feature it, and if you include that hashtag in every show that you do as well, you can tell people just type in this hashtag in Facebook, and you'll find everything I've ever done, and uh, that's the, that's just another way of actually being found um, on Facebook, these hashtags. Because not a lot of people use them, do they? Not I've heard of. Well, I, on Twitter, uh, I tend to use them um, on, which I don't tweet very often. Um, on LinkedIn, I tend to use them because when you post something on LinkedIn, it gives you suggested hashtags right there and you just have to click on them and they'll go in. On Facebook, I rarely remember, and I don't know why. I don't know why I rarely remember, but it's just, it's not automatic to me on Facebook. And so, yeah, yeah I just rarely remember. How about yourself? I'm, I've got to say that I'm the same. I'm not coming from a, a point of virtue here. I, I do it when I remember. And it's because we've not been, we've never used Facebook in that way. As you said, uh, Twitter, Instagram, we put, the tags in because we know we'll be found by the search. Now, we've got this, I've got to be in my bonnet about Facebook search. Uh, if Facebook search was as good as Google search, then that would be awesome. But Facebook search isn't as good as Google search because it's not, well, I don't think it's top of their priority list. But I think if you start putting hashtags in now, it'd be good practice for down the road. Okay, and Claire agrees. That's good. All right. Okay. Yep, so hashtags on Facebook. Okay, and uh, Claire is saying she rarely uses them on Facebook. Hadn't really thought about it. Twitter and Instagram, yes. Um, Facebook search is handy. If you, if you search for bots for broadcasters at the moment, then you will find us. 
and you find all our shows going back a long time uh, and you can watch them back to back no don't do that just watch the recent ones <laughs> so some of the early ones we, we were well we're, we're far better now than we were then um, but that's just the technology improving we've always had the same great content tongue-in-cheek that one yeah. i was i was um i was being tongue-in-cheek the other day in the livers group and somebody picked up on it and thought it was sarcasm are tongue-in-cheek and sarcasm the same thing i don't know i anyway, thought so yeah okay a bot story okay now as well as actually doing bots we actually subscribe to bots as well and we subscribe to bots because one we want to be in the know and the second thing is we are by well I, i'm going to talk for myself i am by nature nosy i want to know what's going on and uh i got a notification uh from a bot uh, from somebody who i know quite well and i thought right okay they were going live at 12 p.m eastern today so in reply to an invitation to go and watch the show i said so are we <laughs> so as a reply and lo and behold i got a, a, a bot message back but then two minutes later i got oh dear we all seem to go live at the same time now that wasn't written by a bot but it proves beyond doubt that bots can create conversations from the silliest of things yeah you can, act you can actually talk to a bot and get a human you and can magical yeah you can and it's it, it's a best practice to include right on the menu right on the main page a way to get to talk to a human it is especially these days people are a little wary of bots they don't quite you know they haven't quite experienced them yet if you have a spot to summon a human that is a really wonderful idea for those who are are a bit suspicious and just want to cut to the chase and yeah. and get someone um it's a it's a best practice to include that now, the def default on many chat is talk to a human. Okay, much better than that, in my opinion, is talk to RJ, talk yeah. to Stephen. So personalize it. Don't n always look at what the defaults are and then personalize it to suit yourself. Um, and that that carries weight as well because then people are not. If people see something that says talk to a human, they think that's a bit strange. But talk to Stephen, talk to RJ, talk to Claire, talk to Gospel. Well, you'd want to. Yeah. So you, you're cutting down the resistance to actually uh, people doing it and running the other way. You don't want people to run the other way. You want to bring them in to talk to you. Uh, right, okay. All right, okay. And Gospel is saying that Facebook search is getting a little bit better. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. One more reason to... Uh, see if we can get hashtags going so our hashtag would be uh bots for broadcasters okay now this is this is just one of the life's coincidences that if you're going to abbreviate that you would actually go b4b yeah mm -hmm. hash b4b wouldn't you okay yeah and guess what's the hashtag for blubbing for britain is <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes yes it gets complicated doesn't it it does yeah so we either get we either going with that blubbing for britain crowd who are on at 10 a.m in the uk tomorrow or we get our own hashtag or we just you know we just mix it up and so two lots of us we're using the same hashtag for two shows on be live then that, that's got to be good and we say hello to uh all right okay a question from claire are you using ManyChat for your bots? At this moment, I'm building on ManyChat, uh, and I'm also uh, spreading out to a couple of other products. Um, and uh, so I'm experimenting and bringing you news of it works or it don't work. Uh, so And so is Steven. So uh, always a good reason to tune into this particular show. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm absolutely using ManyChat reason being it's the easiest one to use i have clients who want to they sometimes want to do part of it themselves sometimes they want to diy the whole thing i want to teach them 
how to use bots on the easiest system that there is, the most visual system that there is. So I use ManyChat for that. Brigetti's here. And Brigetti's here. Wonderful. I, I, I use ManyChat because you said I should. Um, <laughs> going, we're going back a bit there. <laughs> Because uh, I was watching your shows about many chat, and I thought ah, that looks interesting. Um, and then I wanted to do more. I thought, who did we? And that's how we got together, really. Um, so we have a lot to look forward to, bot wise. We're just at the beginning, really. Uh, many chats are improving, given additional resources, which will be part of our bots for broadcasters intermediate course. Just subtle hint there, along with bots for twitch broadcasters uh and we don't, we're not sure which will actually start first well, it's do, oh, there's right, it's okay. a plethora to choose from it's a buffet right. okay digressing totally this is a total digression i was speaking to fonz earlier we were broadcasting on twitch and we we're joined by um alfredo so that's the uh, three musketeers on twitch and we we jointly came up with an idea, and the idea is for a five-hour charity show running from 9 a.m. Eastern to 2 p.m. Eastern on February the 26th. So that's a five-hour broadcast on February the 26th. We are open to people joining us, bringing with them their own charity and, a, well, just to keep the show going for some length of time. It can be 10 minutes, it can be an hour, it can be a whole five hours. But we're looking for people to join us on February 26th and to raise money for charity. Now, this is something that we did with the 12 hour marathon. Uh, we're now cutting it down to five hours because that's more practical. Uh, I'll be hosting the first four hours. Fonz is hosting the final hour. So by the time my batteries run down, he can take over for the last hour because Brigetti did that last time. Brigetti is involved. I'm hoping to see Brigetti in a minute because Brigetti has a charitable cause in Africa that sparked all this five-hour broadcast. So we're going to, Fonz and I are going to organize the five-hour broadcast and then we'd like everybody who would like to join in to uh, join us. And Brigetti, when you type ye, um, you need to type it in Messenger. But I can shortcut that because we're, we are... This is the link, Brigetti. Sorry to put you through hoops. Oh, oh, right, okay. We're good. Um, and we're joined by Brigetti. Hello. Hey. Hello, hello. Good to see you. <laughs> it is. It's good to see you as well. I know we, we originally, uh, we, we deferred talking about bots together um to we did. whenever you let us know and i was just talking whilst you were joining us about uh Pons and i will will host the five hour charity event as this was originally your idea then you pick the best slot you want within 9 a.m through to 2 p.m but the back end you can just ignore that's taken care of uh Pons and i will be on the back end but you can you can host any section that you like and the basic idea is that anybody who wants to come in and bring a charitable cause with them so we can have several charitable causes during the course of the five hours can actually and that means it's two things one it gives publicity to the charitable cause and the second thing is it gives people a reason to listen to more than the first five minutes because you don't know what charities are going to be coming up yeah I'm going to i know stop that's very now. exciting you know um because you can get charitable causes all over the world then um it's not just in one location and i think that's that's kind of unique so people could get involved um in whatever charity is in their local area but the um the publicity for the organization becomes global correct totally true it's all gone quiet Mean, must mean that we're coming towards the end of the show. Oh, <laughs> the end of the show. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind hour. I mean, we've covered, we didn't have an agenda to start with, but we've, we've covered a whole range of topics today. Um, 
and telling five and a half thousand people to join us, they'll be joining the replay. So that's good. Can I tell you something I've noticed in because um, I was I was watching the show for a bit before I came online, and even just watching it now, um, there's a slight delay um, between the sound and the video. I'm not sure if you were able to pick it up, um, Stephen. I, I I picked it up with both myself and RJ. Yeah, we're we're all suffering from it today. Um, because I know some other there. people were talking about it as well, and um, I, I just noticed that because because when you when you talk, um, RJ, I've I've noticed, you know, your your it's you can see the difference. There. It's just not in sync. So Facebook's up to something again. <laughs> Facebook or Be Live, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It's it's one or the other. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, we're still in the stage where we're marvelling at this technology because, as we know, the video and sound travel separately and then they're then put together. Uh, as soon as they manage to send the video and sound at the same time, then it will disappear entirely. Uh, it's this actually having to uh, stick things together. So who knows what's going to happen. Bridgette, I'm glad you could join us. And uh, Yes, just, just, for, just for a few minutes. <laughs> And we, we do look forward to you joining us. We, we look forward to uh, helping. Next week. Yep, next week will be good, and we can talk about I'm very excited. <laughs> Brilliant. RJ, over to you. Well, uh, we talked about a lot today, covered a lot of subjects. Uh, probably the most, uh, the thing that stands out in my mind was when we were talking about why, uh, why businesses uh, could you know are encouraged to spend their time and money learning about bots uh and uh talked about a lot of stuff the 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 uh the cruise we went over that we went over uh different kinds of bots uh we took some questions it was a great show today thank you for joining us everybody uh we love to do this show every wednesday at this time on this channel and we love our audience if you have any questions if you have any suggestions about some content please do let us know uh because we would love to bring that to you and that's it for me over to you steven Right, just one final uh, question from Claire, which is nothing about messenger box. I'm impressed that two of you are wearing glasses without glaring reflections. I need tips on that. Uh, Brigetti, where, where's your it's lighting? All about, it's all about the lighting. I've got lighting from the side. Um, if you have lighting from the front, then you very definitely are going to get it. You definitely will get a glare because it'll, it'll bounce off your glasses. And I've got two soft boxes, one either side of me, shining onto the wall in front of me, and I'm in the reflected light. And uh, it's it's that's the way to do it. Never have a light shining in your face. We've had people with blue faces, green faces, uh, reflections in the glasses, and it's all caused by pointing the light directly at yourself because you want to highlight yourself. No, you want to do it with the lights to the side of you, and both Brigetti and I are doing that. And of course, RJ's lighting is always impeccable. <laughs> Brigetti, would you like to say beautiful. goodbye for now? Yes, it was lovely joining you for a, a few minutes, RJ and Stephen. So thanks very much. So for me, Brigetti in Cape Town, South Africa, it's bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.